Who wants to be a millionaire American game show? Who wants to be a millionaire often informally called millionaire is an American television game show adapted from the same title British program created by David Briggs, Stephen Knight and Mike Whitehill and developed for the United States by Michael Davies. The show features a quiz competition with contestants attempting to win a top prize of $1 million by answering a series of multiple choice questions, usually of increasing difficulty. The program has endured as one of the longest running and most successful international variants in the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire franchise, running continuously in some form since 1999. The original U.S. version premiered on ABC on August 16. 1999, as part of a two-week daily special event hosted by Regis Philbin. After this, and a second two-week event aired in November 1999, ABC commissioned a regular series that launched on January 18, 2000, and ran until June 27, 2002. Philbin hosted the entire run of the original network series as well as three additional special event series, that aired on ABC in 2004 and 2009. A daily version of Millionaire produced for syndication began airing on September 16, 2002, and was initially hosted by Meredith Vieira. Cedric the Entertainer took over the show in 2013 following Vieira's departure, with Terry Crews replacing him in 2014. The syndicated series' final host was Chris Harrison, who took over from Cruise in 2015 and hosted until the show was canceled, with the finale airing on May 31, 2019. On January 8, 2020, seven months after the cancellation was announced, ABC renewed the show for a 21st season, hosted by Jimmy Kimmel, who is also a co-executive producer of the show with celebrity contestants. The 21st season premiered on April 8, 2020, and its success led to the show being renewed for another season. The show has had numerous format and gameplay changes over its runtime, and since its debut, 12 contestants have answered all questions correctly and won the top prize. As the first U.S. network game show to offer a million-dollar top prize, the show made television history by becoming one of the highest-rated game shows in the history of U.S. television. The U.S. Millionaire won seven Daytime Emmy Awards, and TV Guide ranked it number six in its 2013 list of the 60 greatest game shows of all time. Gameplay, A Gameplay, A Gameplay, A Gameplay, Gameplay, A Gameplay, Gameplay, A Gameplay, A Gameplay, A Gameplay, A Gameplay, 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 A Gameplay, A Gameplay, A Gameplay, a gameplay core rules at its core the game is a quiz competition in which the goal is to correctly answer a series of 15 14 from 2010 to 2019 consecutive multiple choice questions the questions are of increasing difficulty except in the 2010 15 format overhaul where the contestants were faced with a round of 10 questions of random difficulty followed by a round of four questions of increasing difficulty each question is worth a specific amount of money. The amounts are not cumulative. If at any time the contestant gives a wrong answer, the game is over and the contestant's winnings are reduced to $0 for Tier 1 questions, $1,000 for Tier 2 questions, and $32,000 for Tier 3 questions. However, the contestant may choose to stop playing after being presented with a question allowing them to keep all the money they have won to that point. With the exception of the shuffle format, upon correctly answering questions 5 and 10, contestants are guaranteed at least the amount of prize money associated with that level. Contestants giving an incorrect answer see their winnings drop down to the last milestone achieved. Since 2015 in the syndicated version, contestants answering a question incorrectly before reaching the fifth question leave with $1,000, even on the first question, that is worth only $500. For celebrities, the minimum guarantee for their nominated charities is $10,000. Prior to the shuffle format, a contestant left with nothing if they answered a question incorrectly before reaching the first milestone. In the shuffle format, 
contestants who incorrectly answered a question had their winnings reduced to $1,000 in round one and $25,000 in round two. Format History Original Format 1999-2008-2020 Present From 1999 to 2002, 10 contestants played a round of fastest finger to determine who played next. The participants were presented with one question and four answers, and put the four answers in the correct order ascending, chronological, etc., in the fastest time. The contestant who did so correctly in the fastest time played. If no contestant got the correct order, the round was played again, and when a tie occurred, the tied participants answered a second fastest finger question. This round was removed when the syndicated version began in 2002, though it returned in 2004 for Super Millionaire and in 2009 for the 10th anniversary shows. The format remained unchanged, except for changes to the money staircase and the addition of a new lifeline, until 2008. When the show returned to ABC in 2020, the original format used from 1999 the guaranteed amounts for correctly answering questions 5 and 10 were $1,000 and $32,000, respectively for the entirety of the original network run, the syndicated version from 2002 to 2004, and from 2020 onwards. The Super Millionaire specials in 2004 had guarantees of $5,000 and $100,000, respectively. Beginning in 2004, on the syndicated version, the upper guarantee was decreased to $25,000. The 10th anniversary specials also followed suit. Clock Format 2008 2010. In 2008, the format was altered to include a time limit on each question. The amount of time for each question was as follows Questions 1 5 15 seconds, Questions 6 10 30 seconds. Questions 11, 14, 45 seconds. Question 15, 45 seconds, plus the total of all unused time from the previous 14 questions, the timer began to run as soon as the four answer options were revealed, and the contestant had to give a final answer before it reached zero. The timer temporarily paused if the contestant used a lifeline and restarted once the lifeline ended. If time ran out, the game ended and the contestant left with whatever money they had won up to that point. However, if this happened while the double dip lifeline was in effect, the contestant's winnings were instead reduced to the last safety net they had reached. While the clock format was in use, the contestant was also shown the categories of all 15 questions in the order they were to be asked. For the first season of the clock format, the guarantees for answering questions 5 and 10 were $1,000 and $25,000. For the final season, the lower guarantee was increased to $5,000, commensurate with a change in the money tree. Shuffle Format 2010 2015 The format was overhauled in September 2010, splitting the game into two rounds. The first round consisted of 10 questions, each in a different category and worth a different amount from $100 to $25,000. Both the category order and the amounts were randomized at the start of the game, with the latter hidden from the contestants' view from 2014, the categories, to the questions were no longer presented to the contestant. The difficulty level and value of each question were not tied to one another. The value of each question was revealed only after the contestant answered it correctly or chose to jump skip it. A correct answer added the money to the contestant's bank, while a jump put the value out of play. The maximum bank from this round was $68,600. If the contestant missed a question in the first round, they left with $1,000, even if their bank was lower than this total. Choosing to stop allowed the contestant to keep half their bank. The second round presented four questions of increasing difficulty in the traditional format, each of which augmented the contestant's total winnings to a set value. A miss in this round reduced their winnings to $25,000, while choosing to stop allowed the contestant to keep all winnings accumulated thus far. 
Categories for these questions were not given ahead of time. From 2011 to 2014, some weeks were double your money weeks, in which one first round question was randomly designated as being worth double its value. The maximum potential bank from this round thus became $93,600. 14 question format 2015 2019. With the hiring of new host Chris Harrison, the format was changed once again to resemble that of the original millionaire format. Each contestant faces 14 general knowledge questions of increasing difficulty, with no time limit or information about the categories. The guaranteed amounts for correctly answering questions 5 and 10 were $5,000 and $50,000, respectively. Originally, contestants who failed to clear the first five questions won nothing. However, beginning in 2017, a contestant who missed any of the first five questions left with $1,000, even if the missed question was of a lower value. Payout structure Five different ladders have been used over the course of the series. The $500,000 and $1 million prizes were initially lump sum payments, but were changed to annuities in September 2002, when the series moved to syndication. Contestants winning either of these prizes receive $250,000 30 days after their show broadcasts, and the remainder paid in equal annual payments. The $500,000 prize consists of $25,000 per year for 10 years, while the $1 million prize consists of $37,500 per year for 20 years, all less taxes. From 2017 to 2019, Contestants who answered one of the first five questions incorrectly received a $1,000 consolation prize. On the original primetime version, and in earlier seasons of the syndicated version, prior to 2010, contestants who missed one of the first five questions left with nothing. Lifelines, they flines. Forms of assistance known as lifelines are available for a contestant to use if a question proves difficult. Multiple lifelines may be used on a single question, but each one can only be used once per game unless otherwise noted below. Three lifelines are available from the start of the game. Depending on the format of the show, additional lifelines may become available after the contestant correctly answers the fifth or tenth question. In the clock format, usage of lifelines temporarily pauses the clock while the lifelines are played. Plus one 2014-2019, the contestant may invite a friend on stage from the audience to assist with the current question. After the question result, the friend must return to the audience. 50, 50, 1999, 2008, 2015, 2019, 2020, two incorrect answers are eliminated, leaving the contestant with a choice between the correct answer and one remaining incorrect answer. Ask the audience 1999-2019. The audience members individually use four button keypads to register the answer they believe is correct. And the percentage of votes for each answer is then shown to the host, contestant, and home viewer. Beginning in 2004 and ending in 2006, AIM users who added the screen name Millionaire IM to their buddy list and were online were able to receive and register answers they believed to be correct to ask the audience questions in real time. These results were then shown as a separate chart to the contestant. Ask the Expert 2008-2010. Based on three wise men, the lifeline was earned after answering five questions correctly until 2010, when it was given to the contestant immediately following the removal of phone a friend. The contestant was connected to an expert via video call, and the two could discuss the question with no time limit. Ask the host 2020, introduced during the 2020 season. This lifeline allows the contestant to ask for the host's advice on the current question and give the best possible answer. If used and the contestant answers, both the contestant and host do not see the correct answer until the computer reveals it. Crystal Ball 2012-2013, used occasionally during the shuffle round, this lifeline allowed the contestant 
to see the value of the current question before either answering or jumping it if jump the question had not yet been used double dip 2004 2008 2010 first used during super millionaire this lifeline allowed a contestant to make a second guess at the answer if his slash her first one was wrong the contestant had to invoke the lifeline before making the first guess must guess and it was removed from play regardless of which guess was correct in addition the contestant could not walk away from the question after invoking the lifeline it was used in the main series from 2008 to 2010 replacing 50 50 jump the question 2010 2015 this lifeline allowed the contestant to skip the current question but the money associated with it was removed from play it could be used twice per game from 2010 to 2014 but only once from 2014 to 2015 phone a friend 1999 2010 2020 the contestant calls a prearranged friend and is given 30 seconds to discuss the question with that person in 2010 this lifeline was dropped due to an increasing use of search engines by the friends to look up answers the lifeline returned in 2020 with all friends being monitored by a member of the show's production team to prevent cheating switch slash cut the question 2004 2008 earned after answering 10 questions this lifeline allowed a contestant to discard the current question and replace it with one of the same value the contestant was shown the correct answer to the original question before the switch and any lifelines used on the original question were not reinstated it was occasionally used from 2014 to 2019 during was kids week and was available from the outset three wise men 2004 used during super millionaire this lifeline allowed the contestant 30 seconds of advice from a panel of three experts who were sequestered backstage and saw the question only when their help was requested. The 2020 season features a lifeline similar to Plus One, replacing Ask the Audience. This lifeline is offered to the contestant after the 10th question and allows them to consult with their accompanying supporter one time during the final five questions. However, in order to obtain this lifeline, the contestant must exchange one of his or her other remaining lifelines. The contestant has unlimited access to their supporter for the first 10 questions. Top Prize Winners Over the course of the program's history, 12 contestants answered all 15 questions correctly and walked away with the top prize. John Carpenter became the first top prize winner in the history of the franchise on November 19, 1999. Dan Blonsky won on January 18, 2000. Joe Trella won on March 23, 2000. Bob House won on June 13, 2000. Kim Hunt won on July 6, 2000. David Goodman won on July 11, 2000. Kevin Olmsted won the top prize on April 10, 2001, however, because of the jackpot having been set to increase by $10,000 each episode, he won $2,180,000, making him the biggest winner in television history at the time. Ernie Cullen won on April 15, 2001. Ed Tautent won on September 7, 2001. Originally appeared on January 31, 2001, when the jackpot was at $1 $860,000 when he was ruled out after answering his $16,000 question wrong. However, it was determined that there was an error in the question, so he was invited back and won the jackpot as it was at the time. Kevin Smith first top prize winner on the syndicated version, winning the top prize on February 18, 2003. Nancy Christie won on May 8, 2003. Christie is the only female top prize winner. David Chang became the first top prize winner on the primetime revival and the first celebrity to win the top prize, winning $1 million for his charity, Southern Smoke Foundation, on November 29, 2020. In addition, the following contestants won at least a million dollars during their run, albeit not by answering 15 questions correctly in regular gameplay. Robert Essig answered 12 of a possible 15 questions correctly 
and walked away with $1 million out of a possible $10 million during Super Millionaire on February 23, 2004. Sam Murray answered 11 of a possible 15 questions to win $50,000 out of a possible $1 million in his first appearance, which earned him the known 8C during the Million Dollar Tournament of 10. Answered his Million Dollar Question in the tournament correctly on November 11, 2009, and remained the only contestant to do so, claiming the top prize on November 20, 2009. Personnel, personnel, hosts. The original network version of the U.S. Millionaire and the subsequent primetime specials were hosted by Regis Philbin. During development stages of the syndicated version, the production team felt that it was not feasible for Philbin to continue hosting, as the show recorded four episodes in a single day and that the team was looking for qualities in a new host, including someone who was willing to root for them. Rosie O'Donnell was initially offered a hosting position on this new edition, but declined the opportunity almost immediately. Eventually, Meredith Vieira, who had previously competed in a celebrity charity event on the original network version, was named host of the new syndicated edition and began hosting in September of 2002. ABC originally offered Vieira hosting duties on the syndicated millionaire to sweeten one of her renegotiations for the network's daytime talk show The View, which she was moderating at the time. When the show was honored by GSN on its game show Hall of Fame special, Vera herself further explained her motivation for hosting the syndicated version as follows. I did the show because I fell in love with the show, and really, first and foremost, as a parent, I feel that there aren't that many shows on television that you can watch as a family. And when Michael Davis approached me and said, would you be interested in hosting the syndicated version? I said, just point me toward the contract, I am so there. From 2006 to 2011, when Vera was concurrently working as a co-host of Today, guest hosts appeared in the second half of each season of the syndicated version. Guest hosts who filled in for Vera included Philbin, Al Roker, Tom Bergeron, Tim Vincent, Dave Price, Billy Bush, Lizzie Gibbons, Kat Dealey, Samantha Harris, Sean Robinson, Steve Harvey, John Henson, Sherry Shepard, Tim Gunn, and D. L. Hewley. On January 10, 2013, Vera announced that after 11 seasons with the syndicated millionaire, she was leaving the show as part of an effort to focus on other projects in her career. She finalized taping of her last episodes with the show in November 2012. While Philbin briefly considered a return to the show, Cedric the Entertainer was introduced as her successor when season 12 premiered on September 2, 2013. On April 30, 2014, Deadline announced that Cedric had decided to leave the show in order to lighten his workload, resulting in him being succeeded by Terry Crews for the 2014-15 season. Crews was succeeded by Chris Harrison, then host of The Bachelor and its spin-offs, when season 14 premiered on September 14, 2015. On January 8, 2020, a 20th anniversary revival of the show was announced, with late-night talk show host Jimmy Kimmel as host and co-executive producer. In March 2020, Philbin was invited to the new Millionaire Studio in Culver City, California, to take a look at the new set and talk to Kimmel about his tenure on the show. This was Philbin's last appearance on Millionaire before his death on July 24, 2020. Production Staff The original executive producers of the U.S. Millionaire were British television producers Michael Davies and Paul Smith, the latter of whom undertook the responsibility of licensing Millionaire to American airwaves as part of his effort. Smith served until 2007 and Davies until 2010. Additionally, Lee Hampton, previously co-executive producer in the later days of the network version and in the syndicated version's first two seasons, served as an executive producer from 2004 to 2010. Rich Sirop, who was previously a supervising producer, became the executive producer in 2010 and held that position until 2014 when he left Millionaire to hold the same position with Vera's newly launched syndicated talk show. 
and was replaced by James Rowley. Vincent Rubino, who had previously been the syndicated millionaire's supervising producer for its first two seasons, served as that version's co-executive producer for the 2004-05 season, after which he was succeeded by Vera herself, who continued to hold the title until her departure in 2013, sharing her position with Syrup for the 2000. Producers of the network version included Hampton, Rubino, Leslie Fuller, Nikki Weber, and Terence McDonnell. For its first two seasons, the syndicated version had Derder Kosman for its managing producer. Then Dennis F. McMahon became producer for the next two seasons, joined by Dominique Brubella as his line producer, after which Jennifer Weeks produced the next four seasons of syndicated millionaire shows, initially accompanied by Amanda Zucker as her line producer. The first 65 shuffle format episodes were produced by McPaul Smith. The network version had Ann Miller and Tiffany Trigg for its supervising producers. They were joined by Wendy Roth in the first two seasons and by Michael Binkow in the third and final season. After Rubino's promotion to co-executive producer, the syndicated version's later supervising producers included Syrup 2004-9, Gina Jinsig 2009-10, Brent Burnett 2010-12, Jeff Rosen 2012-14, and Lise Harris 2014-16, who was the show's last co-executive producer. The original network version of Millionaire was directed by Mark Gentile, who later served as the syndicated version's consulting producer for its first two seasons. He went on to serve as the director of Duel, which ran on ABC, from December 2007 to July 2008 and Million Dollar Password, which aired on CBS from June 2008. The syndicated version was directed by Matthew Cohen from 2002 to 2010, by Rob George from 2010 to 2013, and by Brian McAloon in the 2013-14 season. Former The Price is Right director Rich DiPiro, who later directed Mental Samurai, became Millionaire's director in 2014 and was later replaced by Ron DeMaurice after the 2016-17 season, who remained as director until the show's cancellation. Production The U.S. version of Millionaire was a co-production of Two-Way Traffic, a division of Sony Pictures Television, and Valacrest Productions, a division of the Walt Disney Company. Two-Way Traffic purchased Millionaire's original production company Celador until 2007, while Valacrest remained throughout the show's history and holds the copyright on all U.S. Millionaire episodes to date. The show was distributed by Valacrest's corporate sibling Disney ABC Home Entertainment and Television Distribution, previously known as Buena Vista Television and later known as Disney ABC Domestic Television. In the 2020 reboot, Sony Pictures Television subsidiary, Embassy Row, Jimmy Kimmel's production comedy, Kimmelot, and Valacrest Productions co-produced the show with Sony Pictures Television, the rights holder to the franchise, distributed the reboot outside of North America. The U.S. Millionaire was taped at ABC Television Center East Studio on the Upper West Side of Manhattan in New York from 1999 to 2012. Tapings were moved to Tuinipi Broadcasting's Metropolis Studios in East Harlem in 2013, and production moved to studios located in Stamford, Connecticut the following year. For the final three seasons, production relocated to Bali's Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Episodes of the syndicated version were produced from June to December. The show originally taped four episodes in a single day, but that number later changed to five. Origins When the U.S. version of Millionaire was first conceived in 1998, Michael Davies was a young television producer who was serving as the head of ABC Little Noticed Reality Programming Division at a time when reality television had not yet become a phenomenon in America. At that time, ABC was lingering in third place in the ratings indexes among U.S. broadcast networks and was on the verge of losing its status as one of the big three networks. Meanwhile, the popularity of game shows was at an all-time low, and with the exception of The Price is Right, the genre was absent from network's daytime lineups at that point. Having earlier created debt for lifetime television 
and participated with Alt Burton and Donnie Brainard in the creation of When Ben Stein's Money for Comedy Central, Davis decided to create a primetime game show that would save the network from collapse and revive interest in game shows. Davis originally considered reviving CBS' long-lost quiz show The $64,000 Question with a new home on ABC. However, this effort's development was limited as when the producer heard that the British millionaire was about to make its debut. He got his friends and family members in the UK to record the show and subsequently ended up receiving about eight Fed X packages from different family members, each containing a copy of Millionaire's first episode. Davies was so captivated by everything that he had seen and heard, from host Chris Tarrant's intimate involvement with the contestant to the show's lighting system and music tracks, that he chose to abandon his work on the $64,000 question revival in favor of introducing Millionaire to American Airwaves, convinced that it would become extraordinarily popular. When Davis presented his ideas for the U.S. Millionaire to ABC, the network's executives initially rejected them, so he resigned his position there and became an independent producer. Determined to bring his idea for the show to fruition, Davis decided to bet his career on Millionaire's production, and the first move that he made was planning to attach a celebrity host to the show. Along with Philbin, a number of other popular television personalities were considered for hosting positions on the U.S. Millionaire during its development, including Peter Jennings, Bob Costas, Phil Donahue, and Montel Williams, but among those considered, it was Philbin who wanted the job the most, and when he saw an episode of The British Millionaire and was blown away. When Davis approached ABC again after having hired Philbin, the network finally agreed to accept the U.S. Millionaire. With production now ready to begin, the team had only five months to finish developing the show and get it launched, with Davis demanding perfection in every element of Millionaire's production. Audition Process Music Originally, the U.S. Millionaire carried over the musical score from the British version, composed by father and son duo Keith and Matthew Strachan. Unlike older game show musical scores, Millionaire's musical score was created to feature music playing almost throughout the entire show. The Strachan's main Millionaire theme song took some inspiration from the Mars movement of Gustav Holst's The Planets, and their question cues from the $2,000 to the $32,000 slash $25,000 level, and then from the $64,000 slash $50,000 to $500,000 level, took the pitch up a semitone. On GSN Game Show Hall of Fame special, the narrator described the Strachan tracks as mimicking the sound of a beating heart, and stated that as the contestant worked their way up the money ladder, the music was perfectly in tune with their ever-increasing pulse. The original Millionaire musical score holds the distinction of being the only game show soundtrack to be acknowledged by the American Society of Composers, authors and publishers as the Strachans were honored with numerous ASCAP awards for their work, the earliest of them awarded in 2000. The original music cues were given minor rearrangements for the clock format in 2008, for example, the question cues were synced to the ticking sounds of the game clock. Even later, the Strachan score was removed from the U.S. version altogether for the introduction of the shuffle format in 2010, in favor of a new musical score with cues written by Jeff Lippincott and Mark T. Williams, co-founders of the Los Angeles-based company Otwo Music. When production resumed in 2020, the original Strachan's score was used. Set The U.S. Millionaire's basic set was a direct adaptation of the British version's set design which was conceived by Andy Walmsley. Paul Smith's original licensing agreement for the U.S. Millionaire required that the show's set design, along with all other elements of the show's on-air presentation musical score, lighting system, host's wardrobe, etc., adhere faithfully to the way in which they were presented in the British version. This same licensing agreement applied to all other international versions. The original version of the U.S. Millionaire's set cost $200,000 to construct. The U.S. Millionaire's production design was handled at different times by David Weller, Jim Fenhagen, and George Allison. 
unlike older game shows whose sets are or were designed to make the contestants feel at ease millionaires set was designed to make the contestant feel uncomfortable so that the program feels more like a movie thriller than a typical quiz show the floor is made of plexiglass beneath which lies a huge dish covered in mirror paper before the shuffle format was implemented in 2010 the main game had the contestant and host sit in chairs in the center of the stage known as hot seats these measured 3 feet 0.91 m high were modeled after chairs typically found in hair salons and each seat featured a computer monitor directly facing it to display questions and other pertinent information shortly after the shuffle format was introduced to millionaire Vieira stated in an interview with her millionaire predecessor on his morning talk show that the hot seat was removed because it was decided that the seat which was originally intended to make the contestant feel nervous actually ended up having contestants feel so comfortable in it that it did not service the production team any longer the lighting system was programmed to darken the set as the contestant progressed further into the game there were also spotlights situated at the bottom of the set area that zoomed down on the contestant when they answered a major question to increase the visibility of the light beams emitted by such spotlights oil was vaporized creating a haze effect media scholar dr robert thompson a professor at syracuse university stated that the show's lighting system made the contestant feel as though they were outside of prison when an escape was in progress when the shuffle format was introduced the hot seats and corresponding monitors were replaced with a single podium so that the contestant and host stood throughout the game and were also able to walk around the stage. Also, two video screens were installed, one that displayed the current question in play and another that displayed the contestant's cumulative total and progress during the game. In September 2012, the redesigned set was improved with a modernized look and feel in order to take into account the show's transition to high-definition broadcasting, which had just come about the previous year. The two video screens were replaced with two larger ones, having twice as many projectors as the previous screens had. The previous contestant podium was replaced with a new one, and light-emitting diode LED technology was integrated into the lighting system to give the lights more vivid colors and the set and gameplay experience a more intimate feel. Broadcast History ABC The U.S. version of Millionaire was launched by ABC as a half-hour primetime program on August 16, 1999. When it premiered, it became the first U.S. network game show to offer a million-dollar top prize to contestants. After airing 13 episodes and reaching an audience of 15 million viewers by the end of the show's first week on the air, the program expanded to an hour-long format when it returned in November. The series, of which episodes were originally shown only a day after their initial taping, was promoted to regular status on January 18, 2000, and, at the height of its popularity, was airing on ABC five nights a week. The show was so popular during its original primetime run that rival networks created or reincarnated game shows of their own, e.g. Greed, 21, etc., as well as importing various game shows of British and Australian origin to America, such as Winning Lines, Weakest Link, and It's Your Chance of a Lifetime. The nighttime version initially drew in up to 30 million viewers a day three times a week, an unheard of number in modern network television. In the 1999 2000 season, it averaged no one in the ratings against all other television shows with 28,848,000 viewers. In the next season, 2001, three nights out of the five weekly episodes placed in the top 10 and all five ranked in the top 20. However, the show's ratings began to fall during the 2001 season, so that at the start of the 2001-2 season, the ratings were only a fraction of what they had been one year before, and by season's end, the show was no longer even ranked among the top 20. ABC reliance on the show's popularity led the network to fall quickly from its former spot as the nation's most watched network. As ABC overexposure of the primetime millionaire led the public to tire of the show, there was speculation 
that the show would not survive beyond the 2001-2 season. The staff planned on switching it to a format that would emphasize comedy more than the game and feature a host other than Philbin. But, in the end, the primetime show was cancelled, with its final episode airing on June 27, 2002. On May 8, 2003, the same day that Nancy Christie became the second top prize winner on the syndicated version, ABC broadcast footage from Charles Ingram's run on the British version of Millionaire as a special episode of Primetime, called Who Wants to Steal a Million? The documentary was originally broadcast in the United Kingdom on April 21, 2000. During that program, Ingram was interviewed by Diane Sawyer. Syndication In 2001, Millionaire producers began work on a half-hour daily syndicated version of the show, with producer Buena Vista Television BVT serving as distributor. Despite the ratings struggles of the network edition, there was still enough interest in Millionaire as a series that enough stations signed on for a fall 2002 launch, the original idea for the syndicated series to serve as an accompaniment to the network series did not come to fruition, as intended, due to ABC decision to cancel Millionaire. On September 16, 2002, nearly three months after the network Millionaire ended its run, the syndicated series premiered. Right away, it found itself having similar ratings issues. Some stations began to look for other options to place in the slots where they had initially plugged Millionaire, this included several larger market stations, especially their largest market affiliate, and thus Millionaire was looking at a second cancellation notice in less than a year. When BVT initially sold Millionaire into syndication, the largest market station to come on board was WCBS-TV in New York, the flagship of the CBS network. Looking to bolster its offerings in the two hours between the end of CBS daytime schedule and its first evening newscast of the day, which had been an ongoing problem for the station for years, Millionaire was one of two major additions to WCBS lineup for the 2002-2003 season. The station gave it the 4, 0 p.m. weekday time slot that had housed Weakest Link, a syndicated version of another network primetime, quiz show in this case, produced by NBC that had launched in January 2002. The time slot at the time was a fairly competitive one. WAB TV had been airing the Opera Winfrey show, which had consistently been the most popular daytime talk show, there since December 1986. WNBC at the time carried Judge Judy, which was the second highest rated program in daytime syndication behind Opera. Millionaire was unable to cut into the audience for either program, despite having the other major WCBS acquisition, the talk show Dr. Phil, as its lead-in. WCBS again decided to switch its lineup. In April 2003, with the season in its final weeks, WCBS announced its addition of the People's Court to its lineup for fall 2003 after the revived series had aired since its 1997 debut on WNBC. WCBS announced that the People's Court would be airing at 4, 0 p.m. once it joined the station's lineup, which meant that Millionaire would be forced out of the time slot after one year. BVT tried to negotiate with WCBS for another time slot, but the station had other obligations and thus could not accommodate them. There was not much in the way of open time slots on any of the other New York stations either, as they had other obligations in daytime and nighttime fringe slots, and BVT was in a position that could have seen Millionaire be reduced to airing in a post-midnight period or another non-traditional time that syndicators try to avoid. Meanwhile, ABC was about to shake up its daytime schedule in a move made shortly after Millionaire concluded its season. The network had long programmed a 30-minute serial at 12.30 p.m., and since 1997 that time slot had belonged to Port Charles. In July 2003, however, the network decided that it would be discontinuing the program after its contract to air it expired in October, and, once that happened, the time slot Port Charles had occupied would be given back to the affiliates to program as they wished. PVT decided to go to its parent company's flagship station, 
and offered millionaire to Wabke as the replacement for Port Charles, and the two sides agreed, as the second season of Millionaire premiered in September 2003 weeks before Port Charles aired its final episode, WAP was forced to air the last few weeks of Port Charles in a late nighttime slot. Millionaire remained part of the station's daytime lineup for the rest of its run. ABC was impressed enough with the ratings improvement that the network, with one or two exceptions, WLS-TV in Chicago and Cab TV in Los Angeles, though the latter would eventually add the series, picked up Millionaire for the other stations it owned. Following the 2014-15 season, Millionaire was nearly cancelled after a disagreement with BBT's successor, Disney ABC Domestic Television, and Sony Pictures Entertainment, the owner of the format rights through its subsidiary two-way traffic. According to emails released in the Sony Pictures Entertainment hack, Millionaire's declining ratings prompted debt. The two sides eventually agreed on terms for renewal, which included a return to the original question format but with 14 questions and cuts to the production budget, which resulted in the series leaving New York for Stamford, Connecticut, although this had been done in 2014, and later moving to Las Vegas. Had the show not been renewed, SB was going to place the show on extended hiatus for three years, after which it would reclaim full rights to the show and be free to shop the revived show to another network or syndicator. DAT, meanwhile, would keep the rights to the format changes made in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Despite its renewal of many of the stations airing Millionaire, especially the ABC-owned stations, added the talk show Ifabi Life for 2015. When F.A. Blythe failed to gain an audience and was cancelled at mid-season, Millionaire was able to return to many of its former airing times for 2016. Beginning that year, Millionaire and the viral video show Right This Minute began being sold as a package to ABC stations. On January 17, 2017, it was announced that Millionaire has been renewed through 2018. Millionaire was subsequently renewed through the 2018-19 season on January 17, 2018. As the 17th season progressed, the future of Millionaire became uncertain. Its strongest group of stations, the ABC-owned stations, had announced that they would be picking up a new talk show hosted by former NBC News anchor and correspondent Tamron Hall for fall 2019 making no announcement about the future of Millionaire with it. Thus, it was speculated that the series would likely be facing its end. On May 17, 2019, the cancellation announcement came down, with Millionaire airing its final first-run episode on May 31, 2019. Just over a year later, another shake-up involving Disney properties gave the series life again. As part of their acquisition of 21st Century Fox's broadcasting assets in 2019, Disney became the syndicator for series that were previously distributed by Fox through its subsidiary 20th Television. This included syndicated reruns of the first 25 seasons of the TV series Cops. In the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer, first-run episodes were canceled by the series' current producer, Paramount Network, as were all reruns. Disney responded by immediately removing all of the episodes of Cops under its control from local stations. Many of the stations airing the rerun package were offered reruns from the final season of the syndicated version of Millionaire as a replacement, and many took them up on the offer. GSN Game Show Network GSN acquired the rerun rights to the U.S. Millionaire in August 2000. The network initially aired only episodes from the three seasons of the original primetime run, however, additional episodes were later added. These included the Super Millionaire spin-off, which aired on GSN from May 2005 to January 2007, and the first two seasons of the syndicated version, which began airing on November 10, 2008. On December 4, 2017, GSN acquired the rerun rights to the Harrison episodes of Millionaire Seasons 14 and 15, which began airing December 18, 2017. Special Editions Various special editions and tournaments have been conducted, 
which features celebrities playing the game and donating winnings to charities of their choice. During celebrity editions on the original ABC version, contestants were allowed to receive help from their fellow contestants during the first ten questions. The only celebrity contestant to win the top prize is David Chang, who won one million dollars for his charity, Southern Smoke Foundation. Other successful celebrity contestants throughout the show's run have included Drew Carey, Rosie O'Donnell, Norm MacDonald, Chip Esten, Lauren Lapis, Anderson Cooper, and Julie Bowen, all of whom won $500,000 for each of their charities. The episode featuring O'Donnell's $500,000 win averaged 36.1 million viewers, the highest number for a single episode of the show. There have also been special weeks featuring two or three family members or couples competing as a team, a Champions Edition where former big winners returned and split their winnings with their favorite charities, a zero-dollar winner edition featuring contestants who previously missed one of the first-tier questions and left with nothing, and a tax-free edition in which H&R Block calculated the tax. Additionally, the syndicated version once featured an annual walk-in and win week with contestants who were randomly selected from the audience without having to take the audition test. Special weeks have also included shows featuring questions concerning specific topics, such as professional football, celebrity gossip, movies, and pop culture. During a week of episodes in November 2007, to celebrate the 1,000th episode of The Syndicated Millionaire, all contestants that week started with $1,000 so that they could not leave empty-handed and only had to answer 10 questions to win $1 million. During that week, 20 home viewers per day also won $1,000 each. Who wants to be a super millionaire? In 2004, Philbin returned to host 12 episodes of a spin-off program titled Who Wants to be a Super Millionaire? in which contestants could potentially win $10 million. ABC aired five episodes of this spin-off during the week of February 22, 2004, and an additional seven episodes later that year in May. As usual, contestants had to answer a series of 15 multiple-choice questions of increasing difficulty, but the dollar values rose substantially. The questions for Super Millionaire were worth $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, the first safe haven, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, $50,000, the second safe haven, $500,000. Contestants were given the standard three lifelines in place at the time 50-50, ask the audience and phone a friend at the beginning of the game. However, after correctly answering the $100,000 question, the contestant earned two additional lifelines, three wise men and double dipsy lifelines, as the game would go to the next dimension. Tenth Anniversary Celebration To celebrate the tenth anniversary of Millionaire's U.S. debut, the show returned to ABC primetime for an 11-night event hosted by Philbin, which aired from August 9 to 23, 2009. The Academy Award-winning movie Slumdog Millionaire and the 2008 economic crisis helped boost interest of renewal of the game show. The episodes featured gameplay based on the previous rule set of the syndicated version including the rule changes implemented in Season 7 but used the fastest finger round to select contestants. Various celebrities also made special guest appearances at the end of every episode each guest played one question for a chance at $50,000 for a charity of their choice, being allowed to use any one of the four lifelines in place at the time phone a friend, ask the audience double dip, and ask the expert, but still earned a minimum of $25,000. On August 18, 2009, New York City resident Nick Bonadio appeared on the program, winning $100,000 with the help of the audience and later, his expert, Gwenefil, as his lifelines. Anadio then used the proceeds to start the sports analytics firm Number Fire, which was sold in September 2015 to FanDuel, a fantasy sports platform. The finale of the 10th anniversary special, 
which aired on August 23, 2009, featured Ken Basin, an entertainment lawyer from Los Angeles, California, who went on to become the first contestant to play a $1 million question in the clock format. With a time of 4.39.45 seconds plus 3.54 bank time, Basin was given a question involving President Lyndon Baines Johnson's fondness for Fresca. Using his one remaining lifeline, Basin asked the audience which supported his own hunch of you who rather than the correct answer. He decided to answer the question and lost $475,000, becoming the first contestant in the U.S. version to answer a $1 million question incorrectly. After Basin finished his run, Vera, the secret guest celebrity, appeared on camera and announced that all remaining fastest finger contestants would play with her on the first week of the syndicated version's eighth season and would allow her and Regis to swap roles as host and contestant, respectively, without switching seats, meaning that Regis won $50,000 for his chance. After this, the million-dollar question was not played again on a standard episode until September 25, 2013, when Jocelyn Reeves became the second U.S. millionaire contestant to incorrectly answer her $1 million question, though she only lost $75,000 as she had used her jump, the question lifelines on her $250 million tournament of 10. Although the syndicated millionaire had produced two millionaires in its first season, Nancy Christie's May 2003 win was still standing as the most recent when the program began its eighth season in fall of 2009. Deciding that six-plus years had been too long since someone had won the top prize, producers conducted a tournament to find a third million-dollar winner. For the first nine weeks of the 2009-10 season, each episode saw contestants attempt to qualify for what was referred to as the Tournament of Ten. Contestants were seated based on how much money they had won, with the biggest winner ranked first and the lowest ranked tenth. Ties were broken based on how much time a contestant had banked when they had walked away from the game. The tournament began on the episode aired November 9, 2009, and playing in order from the lowest to the highest seed. Tournament contestants played one at a time at the end of that episode and the next nine. The rules were exactly the same as they were for a normal million-dollar question under the clock format introduced the season before, except here, the contestants had no lifelines at their disposal. Each contestant received a base time of 45 seconds. For each question they had answered before walking away, the contestants received any unused seconds that were left when they gave their answers. The accumulated total of those unused seconds was then added to the base time to give the contestants their final question time limit. Each contestant had the same decision facing them as before, which was whether to attempt to answer the question or walk away with their pre-tournament total intact. Attempting the question and answering incorrectly incurred the same penalty as in regular play, with a reduction of their pre-tournament winnings to $25,000. If the question was answered correctly, the player that did so became the tournament leader. If another player after him slash her answered correctly, that player assumed the lead, and the previous leader kept their pre-tournament winnings. The highest remaining seed to have attempted and correctly answered their question at the end of the tournament on November 20, 2009, would be declared the winner and become the syndicated series' third millionaire. The first contestant to attempt to answer the million-dollar question and got it correctly was Sam Murray, the tournament's eighth-seeded qualifier. On November 11, Murray was asked approximately how many people had lived on Earth in its history and correctly guessed 100 billion. Murray was still atop the leaderboard entering the November 20 finale, as he remained the only contestant to even attempt to answer his or her question. The only person who could defeat him was top seed and $250,000 winner Jehan Shamsid Dean, who was asked a question regarding the Blorange, cited as a rare example of a word that rhymes with orange. Shamsid Dean considered taking the risk, believing correctly that the name belonged to a mountain in Wales. However, she decided that the potential of losing $225,000 
2020 Reboot A 2020 reboot of the show featuring celebrity guests playing for charity is produced by Kimmel, who is also the host, Davies and Mike Richards. Nine episodes were filmed without an audience in two days mid-March 2020, just before California issued a stay-at-home order due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Partly due to this change, the Ask the Audience lifeline was removed. A new lifeline, Ask the Host, was introduced. The celebrities featured in the first season were Eric Stone Street, Will Forte, Nikki Glaser, Jane Fonda, Anthony Anderson, Ike Barnholtz, Hannibal Buress, Catherine O'Hara, Dr. Phil, Kaitlin Olson, Lauren Lapkus, Anderson Cooper, and Andy Cohen, the latter two of which played as both contestants and supporters. On May 21, 2020, Deadline reported that the revival was given an order for a second season to air during the 2020-21 television season. On June 17, 2020, it was announced that the second season of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was scheduled to air on Sunday nights at 9, 0 p.m. ET starting fall 2020. ABC announced in August 2020 that the second season would premiere on October 18. In addition to celebrity contestants playing for charity as they did in the first season, the second season had frontline heroes also playing for the $1 million prize. The celebrities that appeared in the second season of the reboot were Tiffany Haddish, Julie Bowen, Ray Romano, Rebel Wilson, Joel McHale, and David Chang, the latter of which became the first celebrity on the show to win the top prize for his charity, Southern Smoke Foundation. A report on January 20, 2022 stated ABC put the revival on an indefinite hiatus. Although there are no current plans to make new episodes, the network has left the door open for future episodes. Reception Since its introduction to the United States, GSN credited Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with not only single-handedly reviving the game show genre, but also breaking new ground for it. The series revolutionized the look and feel of game shows with its unique lighting system, dramatic music cues, and futuristic set. The show also became one of the highest-rated and most popular game shows in U.S. television history and has been credited with paving the way for the rise of the primetime reality TV phenomenon to prominence throughout the 2000s. The U.S. millionaire also made catchphrases out of various lines used on the show. In particular, is that your final answer? Asked by millionaires' hosts whenever a contestant's answer needs to be verified, was popularized by Philbin during his tenure as host, and was also included on TV Land's special 100 Greatest TV Quotes and Catchphrases, which aired in 2006. Meanwhile, during his tenure as host, Cedric signed off shows with a catchphrase of his own, Watch Your Wallet, the original primetime version of The U.S. Millionaire, won two Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Game Slash Audience Participation Show in 2000 and 2001. Philbin was honored with a Daytime Emmy in the category of Outstanding Game Show Host in 2001, while Vieira received one in 2005 and another in 2009. TV Guide ranked the U.S. Millionaire Hash 7 on its 2001 list of the 50 greatest game shows of all time and later ranked it hash 6 on its 2013 60 Greatest Game Shows list. GSN ranked Millionaire hash 5 on its August 2006 list of the 50 Greatest Game Shows of All Time, and later honored the show in January 2007 on its only Game Show Hall of Fame special. Other Media 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 Merchandise in 2000, Pressman released two board game adaptions of Millionaire as well as a junior edition recommended for younger players. Several video games based on the varying gameplay formats of Millionaire have also been released throughout the course of the show's U.S. history. Between 1999 and 2001, Jellivision produced five video game adaptations based upon the original primetime series for personal computers and Sony's PlayStation console, all of them featuring Philbin's likeness and voice. 
The first of these adaptations was published by Disney Interactive, while the later four were published by Buena Vista Interactive, which had just been spun off from Die when it re-established itself in attempts to diversify its portfolio. Of the five games, three featured general trivia questions, one was sports-themed, and another was a kid's edition featuring easier questions. In 2007, Imagination Games released a DVD version of the show, based on the 2004 8 format and coming complete with Vera's likeness and voice, as well as a quiz book and a 2009 desktop calendar. Additionally, two millionaire video games were released by Ludia in conjunction with Ubisoft in 2010 and 2011. The first of these was a game for Nintendo's Wii console and DS handheld system based on the clock format, while the second for Microsoft's Xbox 360 was based on the shuffle format. Ludia made a Facebook game based on Millionaire available from 2011 to 2016. This game featured an altered version of the shuffle format, condensing the number of questions to 12, 8 in round 1 and 4 in round 2. Contestants competed against eight other Millionaire fans in round 1, with the top three playing round 2 alone. There was no final answer rule, the contestants' responses were automatically locked in. Answering a question correctly earned a contestant the value of that question, multiplied by the number of people who responded incorrectly. Contestants were allowed to use two of their Facebook friends as Jump the Question lifelines in round one, and to use the Ask the Audience lifeline in round two to invite up to 50 such friends of theirs to answer a question for a portion of the prize money of the current question. Album Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The album Celador Records by Keith Strachan, Matthew Strachan, and various artists was released August 1, 2000 and features songs based on the show. Disney Parks Attraction Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Play It was an attraction at the Disney's Hollywood Studios theme park when it was known as Disney MGM Studios at Walt Disney World in Orlando. Florida, and at Disney California Adventure Park in Anaheim, California. Both the Florida and California Play It attractions opened in 2001, the California version closed in 2004, and the Florida version closed in 2006 and was replaced by Toy Story Midway Mania. The format in the Play It attraction was very similar to that of the television show that inspired it. When a show started, a fastest finger question was given, and the audience was asked to put the four answers in order. The person with the fastest time was the first contestant in the hot seat for that show. However, the main game had some differences. For example, contestants competed for points rather than dollars, the questions were set to time limits, and the phone a friend lifeline became phone a complete stranger, which connected the contestant to a Disney cast member outside the attractions theater who would find a guest to help. After every level the player completed, he or she was awarded a collectible lapel pin. Additional prizes were awarded after every fifth question they answered correctly.